All right, welcome back to the project. So what we're doing in this lesson is we're going to start talking about some debugging techniques and systematic approaches to solving problems or improving your code. Um, now, what I've done for the purposes of sort of amusement and illustration is I've made a small change that is breaking the MP0 uh, code. So you'll see over here, I've got my MP0 test suites and uh, three of them are failing. These were ones that actually succeeded when uh, I was given the MP. Now this can happen. Sometimes, you know, you're messing around, you make some change to see how things work and you kind of forget to undo stuff. Totally normal, totally cool. Now, in that type of situation, normally what you would do is you would get to kind of like go backwards or figure out what you've changed. In this case, we're just sort of pretend that we're actually trying to add functionality. Like you're trying to solve a test case um, you know, when we give you the test cases, we're sort of giving you bugs to fix in your own code or things that you need to get to work. Um, and over the next few uh, videos, what we're gonna do is talk about a systematic approach to that process. Um, and that's really important, right? You know, whenever we work on code, it's always great to fall back to systems, right? To have a checklist, to have a process that we're using, a set of steps that we can use to solve or sort of uh, approach a problem, right? You know. Um, I, I certainly don't want to give anyone the impression that like programmers are like magicians who just magically spew out working code. That's not how it works. We spend a lot of time, you know, working the problem. Like what is wrong? Why is it wrong? What part of the code is running? What are the expectations that are being made? Why isn't it working? And just working things in this systematic way. Uh, if you do that and you have good systems and you practice using them, then you don't have to be brilliant. You just have to be consistent and follow the checklist, right? Um, so we're going to start developing that checklist over these next couple of uh, videos. All right, so step one or step zero maybe, uh, which is a good, um, a good uh, name for this one, is to clean up your code. So a lot of times when you're in the middle of a you know, creative session, you've got, you're writing new code, you may have lost track of your formatting a little bit, or alternatively, what we see sometimes when helping students is that you've got big chunks of commented out code that were sort of experiments. It was like, oh, let me try it this way. It didn't work. You commented it out because you kind of wanted to keep that around. I get that. Um, and then maybe you wrote, tried something else that didn't work, commented that out. And then so frequently, sometimes you get to the place where you've got like a ton of commented out code all over the place. And the problem that that's okay, you know, and it's not a problem to keep that around at least temporarily while you're working on solving the problem. I do that myself. Um, it's like, oh, I don't want to forget kind of how I tried that that one time. There were some new ideas I had to learn. So I kind of want to keep that nearby, but you kind of need to move it out of the way. The goal should be when you're looking at a particular method to be able to see what's happening. And what can go wrong when there's commented out code is that you have a big chunk of commented out code here and a big chunk of commented out code here and your eye is sort of ignoring all of that space. And then maybe in between there's like one line that's still part of the method and you know you may not even see that line you know in the middle of all that commenting and all the grayed out stuff and that line may be the problem. Right? Or that line may be affecting things in ways that you're not, uh, you're not seeing because of all this stuff. So, you know, take that, the commented out code, my suggestion is move it out of the way. You don't have to delete it. I get that, you know, people want to hang on to that stuff at least temporarily, but like put it at the bottom, put it in a separate file. You know, if you have like a notepad or you can move it into a Google Doc or whatever, just like get it out of the way, right? Uh, move it somewhere where it's not interfering with your ability to see the code that's actually being run. The other thing is format. So one, we've tried to instill in you good habits about how you lay out your code. And those habits are informed by, you know, collectively millions of years of experience by working programmers who have realized over time that consistent code formatting is super useful when you're trying to understand code and see what's happening. Um, now, we've been encouraging you to develop good habits in that regard by sort of teaching you how to do it from scratch. And that's still the best approach. The best thing to do is to have it right on the page the first time or close. But it turns out that there are also tools to help with this. And we have included one of these tools in your project. It's a tool called KT Lint, and it will reformat your Kotlin code properly. So I'm gonna show you that in action, show you how to do it. I've made a little bit of a mess on purpose here in this, um, 
in this listener for, for the marker click that's part of your main activity. It's very painful for me. It's hard for me to look at, but we're going to fix it. So um, if I go to here to my run configurations and hit lint, one of the things that that is going to do is run the KT lint formatter over my code. And you will see, uh, yeah, this is okay. If I run it again, the style violations are going to go away. Beautiful. It took all of that mess that I had made with brackets in the wrong spot and weird indentation and new lines that were missing and stuff like that. And it just, boom, we're done. And KTLint really strives to just produce the correct output. Like there's no questions. There's very little configuration involved in using KTLint. It essentially tries to produce code that is according to, according to the Kotlin uh, official code standard. And it did that. So step zero when we're debugging is to sort of center ourselves and get our code to a place where we can work on it, where it's clear what's happening, uh, where it's properly formatted, where any sort of big chunks of unused or commented out code are moved somewhere out of the way so we don't have to trip over them. Um, this will also really help whoever is potentially going to help you read your code. That's the other reason that we use a consistent style in this course is because it's way easier on the staff to be able to help lots of students, which is what they're gonna be doing, you know, all day, all night, they're on the help site, you know, helping people out. Having your code formatted consistently is a huge help to them as well. Okay, step zero, format your code consistently. We'll move on, talk about what to do next.